Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of having too many red blood cells, which we call polycythemia, which is also called erythrocytosis. So before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what this condition is and why it happens. So polycythemia or erythrocytosis is a hematological condition involving abnormally high levels of red blood cells or hemoglobin. So the exact definition as to having too much red blood cells or too much hemoglobin differs depending on the location you're at and the lab that actually measures these numbers. So some of the possible numbers that can be used to actually say that somebody has polycythemia includes having a hemoglobin greater than 185 grams per liter or a hematocrit, which would be the percentage of red blood cells that make up the blood. If that is greater than 52% in males, that would be one definition. And in females, it is a lower threshold, where in females it is considered to be polycythemia or erythrocytosis if it is greater than 165 grams per liter of hemoglobin or hematocrit greater than 47%. So there are many causes of polycythemia, and some of them include a condition known as polycythemia rubra vera, which is a condition that is due to a mutation that leads to excessive production of red blood cells. And besides too many red blood cells occurring from polycythemia vera, we can also see it being a response to external factors, lifestyle, and other medical conditions. So we can see polycythemia being what we would call a physiologic adaptation. If people live in high altitudes like the Himalayas, they will compensate for the decreased oxygenation they get due to the reduced pressures in the atmosphere, they will produce more red blood cells. This is a physiologic adaptation. We can also see it in smokers as well. Some smokers can actually have increased levels of red blood cells because of the decreased oxygenation they are experiencing. And related to this, we can also see it occurring in pulmonary diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD and pulmonary hypertension. Now, the age of onset of polycythemia is going to be in older patients, typically greater than the age of 60, and males are going to typically outnumber females, and they're generally going to outnumber females two to one. Now, the topic of this lesson is that there are a variety of signs and symptoms that can occur with high red blood cells or erythrocytosis, and we're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. So a lot of the signs and symptoms of polycythemia is going to be due to that excessive amount of red blood cells. And you can imagine that if there are so many red blood cells in the blood, your blood's going to be essentially thicker than it should. And this is going to cause a lot of issues. And we're going to talk about those as we go through these signs and symptoms. The first symptom I want to talk about here is pruritus. So pruritus is going to be an itching sensation. And with polycythemia, Pruritus is going to be generalized and excessive. So generalized excessive itching. It's going to feel like your body's very itchy in many different places. It may cause a rash, although it may not. You may simply feel very itchy. And it can be triggered particularly by a hot bath or a shower. So the classic finding is that the patient will go in to the shower. They'll have a shower, a hot shower or a hot bath. They'll come out and they'll feel very itchy. And this can be a symptom of too many red blood cells or polycythemia. We can also see facial plethora occurring as well. So facial plethora is going to look something like this. So it's going to be a lot of redness. So what we would call ruddiness, a lot of redness. This is going to be easier to see in lighter complexion individuals. And not only the face, but the palms of the hands may be affected as well. So this may also be something that can be observed. So it can look like palmar erythema. Palms of the hands can become redder as well. So you can imagine if there's so much blood going through some of those capillaries in the face and in the hands, this is the reason why we can see it being more reddened in appearance. And again, this would be what we would call a ruddy complexion. Now, we can also see issues with presyncope and syncope. So presyncope and syncope are the following. Presyncope is a feeling of being lightheaded or faint. So it's going to feel like you could faint, but you don't. Whereas syncope is actually a fainting episode. And the reason that this can occur is that because of all of those red blood cells in the blood, that blood's going to be very thick. It's going to have increased viscosity. And that's going to lead to decreased perfusion of the central nervous system. And this is going to lead to issues feeling very lightheaded and possibly with episodes of fainting as well. Now, along with this, we can see headaches as well. So headaches can be varying in intensities and severities. And again, this is going to be due to decreased perfusion to the central nervous system. And then we can also see dyspnea. So dyspnea is shortness of breath. So this is going to be due to decreased ability for the blood to move through those respiratory vessels, which lead to subsequent reduced oxygenation. So those blood vessels in the respiratory system, the ones that actually go to the alveoli, the little air sacs, to actually 
re-oxygenate red blood cells. If there are so many red blood cells, they can have difficulty traversing through those blood vessels at the alveoli. So this can be a reason why we can see issues with reduced oxygenation. This is why we can see shortness of breath. Now we can also see issues with tinnitus or tinnitus. So this is going to be ringing or buzzing in the ears. And again, this is going to be due to that increased blood viscosity. So much blood trying to go through those arteries in the auditory system can actually lead to ringing and buzzing in the ears. We can also see issues with paresthesias. Paresthesias are numbness and tingling sensations. So this can occur on the extremities. And then we can also see issues with visual disturbances. So visual disturbances would be transient blurry vision. So meaning that blurry vision will come and go. Sometimes your vision is normal, it's okay. Other times it becomes blurry. And in some cases, there can be temporary loss of vision in one or both eyes, which we would call amaurosis fugax. So again, a lot of those blood vessels that go to the eye that supply the eye can be very small and getting enough blood to supply the eyes can be interrupted if there's so many red blood cells. So again, this is due to decreased perfusion. Now we can also see issues with splenomegaly. Splenomegaly is an enlarged spleen. So an enlarged spleen is going to lead to particular issues because of its location. It's actually right next to the stomach. So if it enlarges, it can actually push on the stomach and this can lead to early satiety. Satiety is simply feeling full. So if you were to eat, you feel like you have a good appetite, you start eating, but then you get full very quickly. This can be early satiety. And again, this can be due to that big spleen pushing on the stomach. And the reason we can see an enlarged spleen in polycythemia or having so many red blood cells is because the spleen is involved in degradation of old red blood cells. So blood vessels in the spleen are very small. The lumen, the hole or the tunnel of the blood vessel is very narrow. And this allows the spleen to essentially test red blood cells that go through. So red blood cells pass through the spleen. And then what happens is if they are old or damaged in some way, they will essentially break down. They become degraded as they pass through that very tight blood vessel. Now, because there may be so many red blood cells, this can actually lead to the spleen becoming enlarged because it has to deal with so many red blood cells. So this is a reason why we can see splenomegaly. And we can also see hepatomegaly as well. So hepatomegaly is an enlarged liver. So hepatomegaly may be asymptomatic or it may lead to some pain or discomfort in the right upper quadrant. So it may just simply be where you actually see the enlarged liver. You may actually be able to feel it if you were to try to feel it. And we can also see gout being something that can be more likely to occur in polycythemia as well. The reason that this happens is due to increased turnover of red blood cells. This is more likely to occur in polycythemia vera. There's going to be so much excessive production of red blood cells and some of the precursors of red blood cells and some of the breakdown of red blood cells leads to higher levels of uric acid, which can then lead to uric acid deposition into joints, which is the cause of gout. So this is the reason why we can see gout occurring in polycythemia as well. And in more severe cases, we may see chest pain occur as well. So this is going to be anginal chest pain. So this is often going to occur with patients doing activities. And the reason that this occurs is again due to that increased blood viscosity and subsequent reduced perfusion of the myocardium. The myocardium is the heart muscle. So because of that very thickened blood, getting oxygenation to the heart muscle can become impaired. And it can be especially important when the patient is active. So if they're active, they're getting a heart rate up, they're going to need more perfusion to the heart muscle. And because of that thickened blood, this may not be possible. So this can lead to anginal chest pain. And then in some very severe cases, we can see congestive heart failure or symptoms of congestive heart failure. So chronic erythrocytosis can damage the heart muscle and cause congestive heart failure. So you can imagine that if you've had polycythemia for a very long time, not getting enough blood to the heart muscle can lead to damage and injury to the heart muscle. So more specifically, it can cause chronic microvascular damage. So it's ischemic damage. Ischemia meaning that there's not enough blood, not enough oxygenation and nutrients getting to the heart muscle. So this is going to lead to microvascular damage. And this is again due to that increased blood viscosity. So congestive heart failure is possible in severe chronic cases of polycythemia. If you want to learn more about erythrocytosis and polycythemia vera, please check my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.